for today's landscape study, I'm going to be doing a crop of a photo I took near Loveland in Colorado. And it, I just love this shot because it's so interesting. It has this beautiful rocky archway and an opening into this blue sky and mountains beyond. It was such an interesting hike, but also it makes for, I think, a really interesting subject matter to paint. So I decided on this cropping. I liked the little cave and the archway and the variety of colors too. You've got these green bushes in the foreground and the stone is just so interesting too. Now we're gonna try to paint this fairly quickly as if we were on site painting plein air outside at the actual landscape. And so we're gonna start by doing a quick sketch so that we have markings in place and we can paint with confidence and accuracy. So an easy place to start in this particular cropping is to create the shape where the blue sky is poking through just on the outer edges of the composition. And this little blue section comes about a third of the way across the square that I've marked out here. So I've already made that marking just a little bit off. So the sky comes right about there. And then you see this interesting crease that's rather splitting the composition in half where the rock is splitting down towards the opening. And it's also helpful to find the center point in your square and look at your composition and decide where the center is in your composition. And so right about in the middle and a little bit to the right, there's this interesting little shape, this little stone casting a shadow. So I'm gonna mark that one. And then it'll also be really helpful to mark the opening in the rock. So right about halfway at the bottom of the composition is where the grass ends and this little pathway starts. So that's another key point I wanna indicate. And then we see just a little glimpse of this step here as we're entering the opening. There's some dark shadows cast by the plants right here. And then I made that a little bit too big, so I'm gonna erase that and we'll have to start over. Sometimes you make marks that just aren't accurate at first, so it's okay to erase them and start over. I'm gonna just indicate where the grass is or the foliage is ending right here, just very loosely marking it out. And it comes more than halfway across in the composition. That's where the opening begins, a little more than halfway. And I'm gonna make a decisive mark for this shape and then the archway coming up, comes up a little here and then curves around almost to the far side. And then we've got this grass here and we'll wanna paint the sky first before we paint any of the foliage overlapping it. There's a little mountain back here. That one's gonna be a little darker blue than the sky. And then I'm gonna draw the shadow shape overlapped by this arch. You do wanna take your time with the sketch and make sure that it's accurate so that you can start painting with confidence, knowing that your marks are, even if they're not perfect, at least close. And so this just takes a few careful and accurate measurements. So there's that crease and this shape is a very tiny little crack right there. I don't want to over accentuate that. And I'm just going to redraw my little stone right here in the shadow shape that it's casting. And most of these shadow shapes we can create with paint later. We can build up our values using the paint and do a lot of the drawing with paint. Remember that the sketch doesn't end as soon as you're done with your initial drawing. You're still going to be drawing with your paint and making decisions on shapes contours, all of that is drawing. Every artist in the 2D field needs to learn to sketch and draw if you wanna be even better at painting. There's this dark shape up here, kind of this weird triangle shape, and then in the corner, I'm gonna indicate this dark shadow. This one creates this elephant looking skin in the rock. It almost looks like the bumps of an elephant. This does not have to be perfect. 
we do want it to be recognizable. So for example, anyone who's hiked here, we want them to be able to recognize what they're seeing in our painting. So getting the key features and the key shapes is gonna be the most important thing. But if you miss a few details, no one's gonna know. After all, we artists are probably the most observant people on the planet. <laughs> couple other little shadow shapes I just want to make sure I'm marking. The sketch doesn't look like much now, does it? But once we start adding paint, it's really going to come together. It's tempting sometimes to just jump right in with paint, but just double check your measurements. Make sure you've got a good, strong sketch and you definitely won't regret it. Couple little light shapes here. This very strong shadow shape comes down. I'm going to make sure I mark that. And once I've drawn that, I can see that this one was off. It was just a little too close to that shadow. So I'm making it slightly smaller. Adjusting. And I think the rest of it we can do with the paint. So I'm going to start with the blue sky areas. Let's talk about my palette really quick. I have a set of natural kind of primaries. I have Gamboge Nova by Holbein, Turquoise Blue by Holbein. This is Burnt Sienna by Daniel Smith. I have Payne's Gray and Sepia by Holbein. And then this is Raw Umber, and I may or may not dip into that. It's kind of like yellow ochre, sort of a natural, earthy, dark yellowish tone. So I'm gonna use my Silver Black Velvet Size 8 Round Brush for this whole project. And to paint the blue sky, I'm gonna start with my turquoise blue. I'm going to clean out my palette a little. There's a little residual green in there. You want to have pretty pure color for this light blue sky. So I'm taking that turquoise blue, adding quite a bit of water. And it's not the exact color of the blue in the photograph, but this is my limited palette here. So I'm working with the colors I have. And it's still going to look like a blue sky. No worries. So I'm just painting in a light wash of that turquoise blue. And then here where the clouds begin to emerge, I've watered down my brush a lot and I'm just sort of blotting my brush, pulling it sideways to suggest some of that cloud texture and even allowing the brush to miss little areas. So we have these highlighted clouds right there. For the mountain, I'm gonna dip into my Payne's Gray and add a little bit of the turquoise blue. It's very subtle, very light mixing here. And I've decided it's okay if that color softens into the sky a little bit. It's not necessary that we have super perfect details here. So there we have sky and mountain. And then the last little bit of sky to paint needs to be slightly brighter blue as we're coming up in the atmosphere here. I'm gonna paint more of a strong turquoise blue in each of these little shapes at the top. And I'm tilting my brush upside down just to get a better angle on this shape. And that's it for sky. Now, the next thing we're going to do is paint a base wash for the rocks. The rocks are really just a nice brownish tan color. And I'm going to use a combination. I'm going to clean this little part of my palette out so I can mix again. So I'm going to use a combination of burnt sienna. I'm going to make sure I can mix up enough of it so that I have plenty to work with and a little bit of that Gamboge Nova. And so we have this really nice kind of neutral light brown. I'm going to add a little more water and then paint that pretty much all over the face of the rock. Right here where it's the brightest in the light, I'm adding more water so it's not quite as dark as everywhere else. You don't have to make this a perfect flat wash. After all, it's gonna have a lot of texture from all the details of the rock. And you can be somewhat messy where the plants are gonna overlap with this first light wash. It's not necessary 
to try to paint around grass shapes or anything like that. Here in the foreground pathway, I'm just adding lots of water. It's a very light value, ever so slightly brown tinted. And that's going to be the base layer for that little path. And then we just need to complete the shape all the way to the top. Oops, and I probably should have let that blue dry, but that's okay. So there's our first layer. Now I'm going to let all of that dry completely before I go back in with any details. Since there are some really hard edges and strong shadows, I want to make sure that it's not too soft, that it has plenty of those nice crisp edges, and that's going to need to be dry before we do that. With our first wash dry, we can now go back in with more of a medium tone, suggesting some of the areas that are in the light and not quite in shadow, but a little darker than this value. So I'm going to be using my raw ombre now. And just mixing that up here, you can see what a yellowish tone that is. And then a little bit of the burnt sienna. And then some of that sepia to really kind of darken that up. Give it a nice mid-tone brown here. And so with lots of wet, juicy paint on my brush, I'm now going in and painting the mid-tones that I see in the rocks. I am not looking at super specific details just yet, strictly value and color. And so to do this, I'm squinting at my reference photo and trying to see big shapes. I'm going to paint in the dark values too, but those will need to go darker with another layer later. But for now, this is helping me really start to see where the darkest values are. Sometimes it's helpful to go in with lighter values and work your way darker. It can be really scary just going in guns blazing all hard edges and dark colors on the first pass. This is a much more conservative way to approach it. So there's a dark shape right here I'm filling in. Kind of this triangle shape right here. And then I'm being a little more cautious as I approach the foliage areas. Not to put too much dark paint right there because that'll be hard to cover with green. It'll just sort of mess up the color if I do green over the top of that. So be careful not to put too much dark color where the grass is going to overlap. And so I'm just blotting with my brush, just creating all this rocky texture, working quickly. Another fun thing you can do is you can scrape your brush across the surface of the dry paper to add some texture. You want to still observe the way that the rocky striations are moving. So these are kind of coming down and at this angle towards the archway. And then there's a couple that are moving upward, sort of intersecting. So look for those changes and movement in the shape of the rock, but don't be so specific with it. That's really not necessary to get the character of the rock. Squint at your reference photo and look for the big shapes, the big colors. Here towards the top by the sky, the rock gets a little darker in value. And there's a strong shadow right there we'll need to fill in with a darker color later. And then there's another really dark shape right here. So again, it's still not looking like, like much. It'll look a lot better once we have the really dark values in and some of the grassy shapes. Just be patient with the process. If you're looking at it and thinking, "Ugh, it's so ugly, don't worry. I go through the same thing. I'm constantly having to tell myself to just push through, go to the next step, see it through to the end. And I have never regretted finishing a painting. I still wanted to throw them away from time to time, but you won't regret it. You'll learn something from the process every time. So I'm just filling in the dark shapes that I see. There's a really strong shadow here that we marked with our pencil and some really interesting shapes. That elephant skin looking rock right here. You could spend a lot of time on a landscape 
study like this and spend a lot more time on the details. But the goal with these little segments is to try to get the paint on quickly and to just get an expression of what we're seeing as if we're painting it from real life. There's this little heart shape in the rock right here in that mid-tone color. And little darker rocks here on the side. And then as the rock begins to turn underneath and into the shadow, it's a little bit more chromatic towards the opening where there's a little bit of light entering and then it goes to almost black right here. Now I'm dipping into my sepia for a richer darker brown and I'm going to begin the process of painting the shadow shapes. This will probably take you the longest of any of the steps, just because you're going to want to be the most meticulous with these shapes, since it's the shadows against the light areas that are really going to give us the character of the rock and reveal the shape of the rock. So with that dark sepia color, I'm painting in more detailed brush strokes following what I'm seeing in the reference photo. Connecting that heart shape to the shadow here. And then letting my brush dance a little bit. You have to adjust your position, your grip on the brush, depending on what angle you're coming at the painting from. So here in the corner, I'm turning my brush upside down and approaching it a little different. Now I'm mixing in some Payne's Gray for this dark value up here. And it's going even darker in these shadow shapes. And you can drop that in to create an even darker black in your shadows. Don't be afraid to go dark with your watercolor paint. If you want your painting to look powerful and to have lots of strong contrast and rich depth, you've got to be willing to go really dark in your shadow shapes. Don't shy away from that. There's this very deep shadow right here as the rock is curving over. And re-dipping in the paint as I need darker paint. It starts to wear off your brush after a little while. So just reload. And then here, in this deep crease, this is such a distinctive marking on this rock. We're going to go really dark in the shadow. Squint your eyes at the reference photo so that you're not trying to see too many details within the shadow. Just look at the contour, the outside shape of that shadow, and fill it in. Don't worry about the details in the shadow. That is such a simple way to paint something quickly and still make it look realistic as if you're just painting shadow shapes. And then as the shadows begin to emerge, they may not be quite as strong or as dark. So here I'm dipping in my burnt sienna and I've got more of a brown on my brush. Not quite so strong and dark. And then there's this little shape right there. And then we're going to paint this archway under here. I'm going to use my Payne's Gray sepia combination. Very, very dark. This is a focal point in the painting. It's a very important part of the painting. 
So it's okay to have hard edges here and to really make it your strongest point of contrast, both in color difference between the blue and the black and also value difference. And so you can see what I mean by we're still drawing with paint, you're still painting as if your brush was a pencil following the contours, the shape of the rock very carefully. Now where you're gonna have some plants overlapping, go ahead and paint around those. And then I'm brushing off some of that paint onto my paper towel and then dipping in the burnt sienna. Now I still have dark paint in my brush, so the combination here is really perfect for more of a dark brown as the shadow merges into the light. And then a couple little rock details there. Adding those dark values is really gonna make it pop. I'm gonna add another dark shape right here Darken that one up and then just very loosely paint a few little detail shapes with the tip of my brush using that dark tone that's on there. Now you might be wondering how we're going to make the green for the plants and that's what we're going to be using our Gamboge Nova for. You could paint the foliage at any point in this painting if you wanted. I'm just kind of trying to finish up some of these details in the rock first. So I'm gonna just use some flat, broad brush strokes here to paint center the different planes that we see on the surface of the rock. And just to give it some interesting, loose effects, a little more texture. Going to darken up this shadow on this side here and create some more interesting detail at the top. Notice I'm just really working quickly. I'm not being super specific with those details. And if you feel like any of your edges kind of get away from you and they look too detailed, too hard, you can always wash them out a little bit by scraping your brush across the surface and smoothing out some of those details that got just a little too overworked. So that's what I'm doing here. And I actually like the look of that better. Now, sometimes in the rock, you'll see cooler colors. You'll see little hints of almost blue. So now I'm gonna take some of that turquoise blue and add those bluish effects for some really interesting pops of color within the rock. This is also helping lend some more color harmony throughout, helping balance it with that blue sky. And I'm of course playing it up a little bit. I maybe don't see quite that bright of a blue in the rock itself, but it doesn't look unnatural. And I think it looks quite lovely. Okay, so now we've reached a point where we can add the foliage. So to make my green, I'm gonna clean this out of the palette. I'm gonna mix Gamboge Nova and turquoise blue. And you can see it produces this lovely spring green. And so with that, we're gonna paint a quick loose wash and you can even add some more pure yellows in there to mix up the color. And along the edge, I'm using the tip of my brush and just dabbing dab, 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 to make it look like scrubby foliage overlapping that rock. And I'm gonna paint that all the way up to the edge here and let some of that overlap the opening. And then we'll add some of that to this side. Make sure your black is completely dry before you paint this color in between or it'll all just wash away. So with that dabbing motion, make sure to leave little highlights in between your plant. 
You don't want to just paint a solid mass for the plants or it won't really look natural. And then we're going to add a shadow shape with the Payne's Gray where those grasses are overlapping the pathway, casting a shadow. So I'm just using quick horizontal brush strokes in my dark tone to cast that shadow. And then within the plants, you can drop in some Payne's Gray or sepia to create dark shadow shapes in your foliage. And look at how it's softening out really nicely wet and wet, creating this beautiful blended look. It doesn't look too overworked, really, really soft. Just blotting that in wet and wet. And you can add some more interesting vertical brush strokes, suggesting the shape of the stems. And then I'm just going to drop in a little bit more strong yellow, creating some blooms. This is very impressionistic. It's not something I'm necessarily seeing in my reference photo, but I like the look of that. It's almost suggesting flowers. And then if you want to really balance out some of that yellow in the rest of the composition, you can add little pops of the yellow in the rock. I'm going to do a little streak of yellow right there and use that to soften this edge. A little pop of that up at the top. And so we're just kind of scattering it throughout. And then take one more quick look at your overall composition. Make sure you didn't miss anything glaring. I am going to darken up this shadow one more time. It kind of washed away when I did that wet and wet effect. So just a few more little details. You can also scrape your brush sideways along the paper to pick up the texture of the paper and add some dry brush technique. I'm going to do a little of that across the top here. You can really see the texture coming out. And remember when you're working with transparent paint, unless you're really scrubbing hard, all of these effects are not going to necessarily disrupt the layers underneath. You'll still be able to see all that beautiful work that you did layer upon layer. That's the goal anyway. I'm going to darken the sky at the top with another layer of my turquoise blue. I just think brighter is better. <laughs> so there is our finished archway from Devil's Backbones. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.